In the last video, we went over how to set up a test environment uh, to actually run tests for our GraphQL resolvers. We created a function called gcall, which is going to be a nice utility and help us out. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I'd recommend watching that first to set up your environment. And now in this video, we're actually going to write a few tests for our resolvers. Now I want to do a quick recap of what we built. So currently where we're at is we had we created a test file for our register. Um, and then we have a single test here. And all we're doing is we're console logging this thing called gcall. So gcall is the utility function that we created to write our tests. And we can pass in a mutation. Uh, so here we're passing in the register mutation. And we can also pass in variables. So in this case, we're passing in the variables that we need to call this register mutation. Then if we look at the implementation of this, all this does is it creates the GraphQL schema. Um, and then it just uses calls the GraphQL function, which comes from GraphQL. Uh, and again, uh, just to make this clear, we're not actually starting the server while doing this. Uh, all it's using is the schema, which if we look at create schema, we're using type GraphQL. So we're using the build schema from type GraphQL. Now, for those of you, I went switched back to actually importing the resolvers manually like this rather than doing a glob, uh, just because one, it was a little bit, uh, I don't want, need to worry about globbing uh, if I want to put them in different places. We could have used the dot resolver that I mentioned, um, but one other thing is the TS node dev was not working because of it, I believe. Uh, so switching over to this works a little bit better. Anyway, this is what we're using to create our schema, and we're actually not starting the server. We're just using that schema to make GraphQL calls. So in our register test, we can now write the test for what we want. So the idea is we want to call the register mutation and then make sure it works how we expect it to work. And the first thing that I want to do is instead of me typing out basically data, I'm going to just add uh, dummy data. And I want the dummy data to be random, so we're going to install a library called Faker. Also, forgot to mention, this is us running the test last time. We got this little just did not exit after one second. I'm going to recommend using uh, uh, basically this flag. I'm actually not really sure how to get rid of this warning or the best way to handle it. And it doesn't really cause an issue with the test running, so I'm just kind of going to leave it for now. If any of you guys know how to handle this, do let me know in the comments below. would love to fix this. Um, so we're going to install Faker. And I guess this really should be a dev dependency since we're not using it in our application, just for tests. Um, and I'm also going to install the types for Faker as well. Um, so now with Faker, we can just create fake first name, last name, email, password. And I haven't used Faker in a while. Let's see if it will give us definitions of what we can call for it. Um, and just restart the TypeScript server for it. And then after uh, this restarts, we'll go ahead and fill this out. And let's see what we want. I think we want a person, probably internet's gonna give us email, I believe, and password. And I bet there's a person, there's name, first name. So now we're going to get random data every single time. And now I'm kind of just passing it here. I'm going to just say const user, or I guess I should say person. Now let's call it user. I'm going to pass it in up here, uh, or at least create an object up here. That way I know what the first name and last name is, and I can check it later if I want to. All right, so instead of console logging this, uh, though we can look at what the the shape of this is so the shape of the response is going to be an object which has the key data then register and that's going to have all our data inside of it so if we wanted to we can actually expect the result of this so what do i mean by expecting the result of this so i could say const response is equal to wait and we could say expect response uh, and we're going to say to match match object. Now I'm using this to match object 
because we don't actually know what the ID is going to be, so we can't really expect the ID, but we can expect what all these other fields are going to be. Um, so here, and actually, I guess we could guess what the name's going to be based on that too if we wanted to, but we can just say data register. Um, and then inside of here, we can say first name is going to be equal to user.firstName. And then right, we don't actually return the password, so we don't have to do that here. Anyway, so you could do this if you wanted to. Uh, yarn test. And we're just going to verify we get the right response back from the mutation. Um, so let's see, what did I do wrong? Uh, so did I, oh, we did a wait G call. So let's see what we got back. So we expected the response to be equal to this when email first name, oh yes. So these are functions. There we go. So user dot first name, these are strings now, perfect. So I can rerun that. And then after this, we may wanna check like for example, whether the user got created in the database so I can just like expect, so I can say const db user, and here we're gonna say await user.find one. And so we can look it up by the email, for example, where email is equal to user.email and expect db user dot to be defined. So we're expecting to find a database user here or a user in the database after we call the register mutation other thing you may want to check some of the fields for example um, so like maybe the email and we're going to expect that it exists oh sorry not the email confirmed and to be false so like for example we expect after we create a user with register they should not have a confirmed account yet you can also check the first name and just make sure that's equal to what we expect and again, you could do it for all the fields, but this is pretty decent. So we can run our test again and make sure all these things pass. Uh, it looked like it passed when I run before the things. And maybe I should add the watch flag while we're ma making changes to our tests. Um, and cool, so this test passed. And again, we could just continue writing more tests for our register resolver, but I kinda wanna show one other type of test. So the other type of test I wanna show, it's gonna be similar in vain, but uh, you'll see where it differs. So we're gonna make a test for the uh, me.ts resolver. So what's different about this resolver um, is it actually uses the request object, um, right? And this is coming from the context. So how can we pass in a context in this in this state or the way we're testing anyway, is what we're gonna go over. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder called me. Inside of that, I'm gonna say me.test.ts. And if we want to, we can copy our structure for our test over here. And so we're going to change this to a me query. And me doesn't take any parameters. And then uh, let's say we get these things back from me. So here I'm going to say me. We're going to say get user. So here we are creating basically a dummy user. And instead of calling it there, Let's get rid of this stuff. We don't need it right now. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just like create a user. And actually you can just call it user. And we're going to save it. And we're going to put in all these fields. So for this test, we're going to need a user. That way we can actually request the user. So we're gonna have first name, last name, email, password. And if we go over to our entities, we can see if there's any other field that we need to add. I think that's it. Uh, ID is gonna be automatically created for us. And so is a Boolean, uh, or sorry, for confirmed. Now we're not hashing the password here. Um, that's not really gonna be an issue because we're not gonna use this user to actually log in, but we could hash this password if we want to. 
um, if we needed that. But in this case, I'm not going to worry about it. So here, the next thing I have like this user and I just want to basically log in with him and then be able to access stuff um, or just pass him through the context in this case is really what I mean by logging in. So in our G call, we're going to alter it. So we can actually pass in a context value right here. And so we have request and we have response objects that our resolvers expect. Um, if we go over here, um, you can see that request and response we expect in our context. And so we can pass those in right here. So now we're not actually doing a re uh, express request, so it's not going to be the same object. So one choice you can do is you can mock this with jest if you wanted to, um, or you can pass in some like dummy functions. So somewhere we clear the cookie, so we can just do that if we wanted to, or we could say jest.function and mock it, and then uh, maybe use this someplace else. But what we're going to use here is we're going to say session and then we're going to say user ID and we're going to allow a user to pass in a user ID as one of the options. And this is going to be a string and this is a possibly undefined. So what's going to happen here is now when I do my G call, so I'm going to run the me query don't have any variables but I'm going to pass in a user ID of the user that we just created right here um, it's not happy with me oh because it's possibly a number it's actually going to be it's actually going to be a number uh, come back over to our test or sorry G call make this a number I forgot the the ID is a number all right, so now this user is going to be passed, that user ID is going to be passed in the context, and we're going to be able to fetch the user. So I can console.log the response and see that we get a user back. Um, and so basically we can control whether we pass a user through the context or not by passing through this. And again, you can kind of do more than just this uh, if you need to pass more things through the context, but that's kind of the idea. So here you can see we get a user back um, and we could also, so we could expect this uh, in the same way as we did before, expect response dot to equal, or sorry, to match. And we're gonna say data, me, and then here we can pass in first name, last name. And we actually do know the, the ID this time. Do note that the ID is a string when it's sent back uh, through GraphQL. If you notice that right here. So we just need to turn that into a string there. Um, and yeah, we could also do the email if we want to. Make sure we get the right email back. Anyway, so that, that, that could be like a test that you use for the me query or the me resolver. Um, and again, we could do the inverse of this. What happens if the user is not in the context? Um, what does that look like? So return null. So that we expect it to return null um, in that case. So make this async, copy this bit. So now we're not gonna pass a user ID in the context and we expect me to be null because of that. Um, so we'll see if this test pass and this is basically the technique that you can use to test the rest of your resolvers is you can pass in and yep looks like it passed as you can pass in different values in the context to put in different basically test data that you can use so test users that you want maybe you have an admin user or something that you want to pass in on some tests and not other tests you can pass that stuff through the context and you can kind of fake it out that way Anyway, this is kind of how I've been writing tests for GraphQL lately, and it works decently well. And it's kind of a mix where you don't write too much. Uh, you get to test a lot of the uh, different values or different things that flow through GraphQL, but we also get a chance to kind of like mock some stuff out through the context. 
uh, when possible, that works out pretty well.